Today on Sci Guys, water bottle rockets. Welcome to Sci Guys, I'm Ryan. And I'm Mark, and on today's episode, we're going to be doing water bottle rockets. What are you doing? I'm a rocket. Oh, he's a rocket. Rocket. Yeah. Yeah. Physical propulsion is the act of moving an object using force generated through a mechanical process, in this case pressure. This differs from a chemical propulsion, which we discussed in the previous episode, in that no chemical reactions are occurring. The equipment you need for this experiment includes a 2 liter pot bottle, a cork, a tennis ball, some tape, foam core board, a nail, utility knife, ruler, large cutting board, a pencil, a bike pump, and a measuring cup. The safety equipment we're going to use for this experiment include an apron or lab coat to protect from spills and splashes, as well as some goggles to protect your eyes. Now you should never point or fire these rockets at anybody or any buildings as they're under a lot of pressure and they could potentially cause a lot of damage. The first step is to take a piece of foam core board that's about 12 inches by 20 inches, take your ruler and mark out the middle points of your foam core board. Do a couple spots because it makes it easier to draw a straight line. Now from the top of your board, draw a line lining up with those marks you just made all the way from the top to the bottom. The next step is to take your utility knife and make sure your utility knife is locked because otherwise the blade will slide in and out while you do this. Cut down the line you just drew as straight as possible. You may have to do this a couple of times to make sure it cuts right through the board. Pick it up and break it in half. The next step is to draw a line from the top corner of your board to the bottom corner of your board to draw out our fins. The next step is to cut down the line you drew on your board. Pick up your board, break it in half. Now that we have our fins cut out, it's time to attach them to our bottle. Place the cork and the pump into your bottle, then tape the first fin to the side of the bottle, making sure that the bottom of the fin touches the ground. Take your second fin and tape it on the opposite side of the bottle, directly across from your first fin. Then tape your third and fourth fin on the open space on the other sides of your bottle so that all four fins are equally spaced apart from each other. Now we're going to make the nose cone for our rocket. Take your tennis ball and place it on the top of your rocket and then tape it down until you have a solid cone of tape over top of your ball attaching it to your rocket. The last step for building our rocket is going to be to put a hole in the cork so that our bicycle pump can fit, fit in it and build pressure. For this step, all we're going to do is we're going to take the nail and we're going to drive it in. So just be careful, obviously, when you're pushing through so the nail doesn't suddenly come out. And you may need some pliers to actually pull it out as this builds a lot of pressure. Now that we've our bottle rocket built, we're ready to go outside. Thread the needle of the pump through the hole we made in the cork. Make sure that the needle goes all the way through. Then add between 3 and 500 milliliters of water into your bottle. Push your cork into the opening of the bottle until you get a really tight fit. Then place your rocket on the ground so it is aimed directly upwards. Now quickly pump the bike pump until your rocket flies away and we have liftoff. Let's watch that one more time but let's move the camera way back. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. As we pump air into our water bottle rocket, we're adding more and more air molecules into the bottle. These air molecules press against the walls of our bottle and generate pressure. The more air molecules we add into our bottle, the higher the pressure inside the bottle gets and the more potential energy is stored inside our bottle. Once enough pressure or potential energy has been added to our bottle, the cork is forced from the bottle's opening and all the stored energy and pressure is released, forcing the air and water out of the bottle in the form of thrust. What happens next in our experiment is a great example of Newton's third law of motion. His third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When the water and air is released, it causes the action 
that generates force downward toward the ground. This action is followed by a reaction which propels the bottle in the opposite direction of the force generated by the water and air. This experiment differs from our matchstick missiles because there are no chemical reactions occurring, only a physical release of air and water. The amount of water, air pressure, and the size of the bottle's opening will change how much force is generated and how high the bottle will fly. Well, that's it for Water Bottle Rockets. Thanks for watching. And if you liked our video, drop us a comment below and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this experiment or about science in general, drop us a comment below or a message on Facebook and we'll try to help you out as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, record them and submit them to us as a video reply to this video. But remember, always get your parents' permission before you submit any videos to YouTube.